get my new moment here. Just trying to figure out how to make that. Okay. We're good to go. Okay. Um, I'm just looking for my preamble, which I think I don't have loaded up. I had to restart my computer, which shut everything down. So give me a second. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay. So it is 6.38 p.m. And uh, oops. I'm opening this. I can just get my computer to do what I want. I'm opening this uh, meeting of the Amherst Historical Commission on July 8th, uh, pursuant to the Governor Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by chapter 2022 of the Acts of 2022 and extended again by the state legislature on July 14th, 2022, signed into law July 16th, 2022. This public meeting of the Town of Amherst Historical Commission is being conducted by a remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing has been posted on the town's online calendar. So uh, with the opening of the public meeting, we decided that our first agenda item would be regarding uh, 172 Snell Street, the uh, request for demolition, demolition of a barn. We're unable to have a public hearing at this point due to notification requirements. Nate, do you wanna just walk us through what our options are here? Yeah, I'll, I'll share my screen in a minute. The um... The owners of 172 Snell have requested to tear down a barn and replace it with a newer shed. Uh, and they, you know, it, the staff deemed it um, significant and that it would go to a public hearing. Uh, held tonight, it wasn't properly noticed in terms of a butter mailings. And so the hearing can't be opened. The, uh, they also went through the wetlands with the Conservation Commission. There's a nearby uh, stream. And so that was approved recently. And in terms of what it looks like, the, uh, the assessor's records said it was built in 1971. It's on the corner of Moody Field Road and Snell Street, so right before the bridge. Uh, there's a new subdivision there. It's a cul-de-sac subdivision. This is the first house on the left. The barn is visible from the road. Um, you know, there's images of a barn being on the property earlier. Um, here's exterior images that's visible. And it, the owner thinks that it was rebuilt using old material. Uh, over time. And so uh, it's hard to say exactly when this was built. Um, here's exterior images. You know, it is, there's a turnbuckle here with the tree next to it. I think it is, it has a failing foundation. And so I think it is uh, close to falling down in parts. You know, it looked like this was just a, um, you know, maybe a farm, two to three acre farm over time based on old aerials. And so here's the, you know, detail of the foundation. Here's the lean. You know, I will say it's probably, you know, it's been painted, so it looks nice. Uh, <laughs> fairly nice from the exterior. Here's some interior photographs. It looks like two foot center, you know, it's dimensional lumber for framing a dirt floor. And so, you know, my thought is that it would be, um, you know, constructively granted, and then we would work with the owners to have more documentation if we think it's necessary. There's not a lot of history on this section of town. It's outside Sanborn maps. It's not, it's not, it's, you know, same locate or similar location as like Hazel and Baker, um, Hazel Avenue and Baker, but it's not, you know, it's right on the other side of the railroad track. So there's not really a lot of documentation actually in this area. Um, you know, the owner thinks that some of the older material was reused and, but, you know, has a lot of modern additions in terms of framing to keep it up. So that's, those are the images. Can you explain what constructively granted means, Nate? Yeah, it means essentially inaction by the commission. So, you know, we're supposed to hold the hearing within, I think it's like 35 or 40 days of a application. Uh, if you count up all the day, you know, we have different timelines in the bylaw. So we have 21 days from the time it's deemed to be significant. Um, and then, 
you know, if a commission can't make a decision or act without an extension by the owner, then it is constructively granted. Okay. Um, and so we could, um, and, and our situation is that uh, we can't have a hearing right now. Um, right. And the question is whether it's worth moving to uh, attempt a, a separate meeting date. Um, right. I mean, I would say my only comment is that, um, well, I did, and I was able to trace the deeds back to about 1903, um, which doesn't tell us much. The other thing, um, I'm I'm a no barn expert, but I did do a semester barn project up in New Hampshire, and I can't tell what this barn is. <laughs> There's no windows, <laughs> which is kind of one of the things that helps you identify. Was there horse stalls? Were there? It was it adapted for chickens? Um, so in that sense, it doesn't really read to me as having um, a particular level of integrity to um, warrant. Uh, the demolition delay uh in my mind um from that what, uh, what name did you get back in 1903 uh let's see i had a little bit of trouble because it did kind of split um there was a foreclosure on the property of carol j hasbrook but i also have an ep harris I think that looks, I have my notes, I say, need to contract registry for further deed tracing. That one went back to 1904. The earlier one was 1916. Um, but again, I mean, your point about the maps, there's really not a lot to suggest where or why this is. And I mean, visually, um, my, my fellow commissioners can weigh in, but I think visually there's not a lot to read there either. Yeah, the, um, right, so the owner had been there um there had been a previous owner who lived there until somewhat recently and then um it, they, they had immigrated from poland and lived most of their life in amherst and were, you know they were born in like 1894 and moved to amherst when they were 12 so early 1900s the house yeah. and, the house the house wasn't built until the late 20s um or the yeah, 20s that, is that the uh what's 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 i can't pronounce it what's sonka joseph and Kater, Kater, katarina or Katarzyna, known as the Cadwell lot, I have. Um, yeah, around the night, around 1920. Yeah, and the, more uh, that has been owned by Frank Cadwell. But the um, yeah, so it's hard to say. Like I said, the one barn and one image had like a lean-to on the side. There's always been some kind of outbuilding or two on this property, but it's hard to say if this is the outbuilding that's been there. Um, it looks like it could be, but maybe it's been rebuilt over time. Okay. I don't know what you know commission members feel we'd like to do we could try to reach out to the owners or we could allow it to be constructively granted and also reach out and ask for you know um you know the ability to take more pictures anyone my, my thought would be to, that there are probably better examples of what we're talking about in amherst that exist possibly um, that have more integrity. Um, we have a good set of images. We don't exactly know what the function is or that it's changed a lot over time, maybe as people use the barn differently. I'm I'm a little curious about its connection to the new West Side Historic District, seeing as it is on Snell Street and Snell Street is part of the, that district. Even though it's on the other side of the tracks, it's it's just uh, makes me curious to know whether it's whether it was um, ever considered to be a part of the Afro American community. Yeah, I told Jacinta that Ed Wilfer, you know, came came in last year as he was researching this, and we looked at properties on Snell Street on the north side of the street, but he never mentioned this one. So there are a few outside the district okay. that he's pretty sure is associated with Hazel Ave. And, um, but this one, he never, he didn't, this never came up. So, you know, we met like three times and looked at maps and he never mentioned this. Uh, so I'm assuming if it did, he would have, um, you know, he probably would have said something, but 
Well, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. <laughs> Got lots to yeah, do. Yeah, no, I, I thought that I yeah. thought the same thing, but I, I did too. When I looked, and I looked at, um, unfortunately, I didn't take screenshots, but when I looked at um, tip of viewer, you know, when you get those historic, um, um, what are they called, the um, maps? You know, there it just it seems like a se just separate part of town, and I mean, there's I would with without a a base house to work off of. Um, I don't even know that there's that much research necessarily. I mean, this could be just like, like it's, it could, we don't really, we don't, we don't really have any idea when it was built. <laughs> it really could be and been built as some sort of shed over time. I mean, I think the lack of windows just says to me that it's, it's, um, it's not, I wouldn't even bother with a form B for it because there's no context. Yeah, I mean the sill's right on the dirt. I mean, it was never like there's not even any corner blocks or anything. It's just uh -huh. yeah. So uh any other comments? Uh Madeline, Pat, Kayla, or Antonia. No, I I'm tending to agree with your assessment, Robin, and and the information you provided, Nate. It it doesn't seem like a significant structure. Or preferably preferred structure. Or preferably <laughs> preferred. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah I, would, yeah, I would agree with all that's been said. Um, Ella's shaking her head. Madeline, you have any comments? No, I, I'm. I agree. Okay. So, um, what's the proper procedure for moving forward? I'll uh, I'll notify just since I can notify the applicants and the owners and. You know, I, I think that's probably it. If Robin, if you want to take more pictures or Hedy, let just let me know. Okay. You know, and then we can go go through that. Okay. Great. All right. So that was um our new agenda, agenda item number one. Now we'll go to our original agenda item number one. Um uh, updates. And I think under the updates we had a, a notation from the previous meeting. Any headway on town funds for a survey plan? No, I actually I was on vacation the other week, and then with the end of fiscal year, it's been busy just wrapping up stuff. So I think um, you know we have money now. For, oh, yes, <laughs> that's a new, it's July. It's you know it's July, so a new fiscal oh. year. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So could we? Is there a potential that we could have an answer by our next meeting? <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna. I think I mean, you and I could talk about what we think. Um, I think I forgot how much we thought it would be, or if we could get a quote, and then yeah. it's just a matter of kind of scoping out the work um yeah okay okay all right good yeah. sorry to interrupt guys but did we want to take a vote on that or did that count as a vote for which item Wait, how does that work for the snell street mm -hmm. no i think we'll we'll just let it go as a constructive grant so okay. they, they don't really need to take any action okay thank you in this right. case action is no action is action <laughs> okay um okay so that's that's good it'd be great to see that go forward um so open space recreation plan yeah so you know the town uh has been working on this for about seven months and the plans the current plan uh expired this past spring it's a five to seven year plan and so um you know, we went to the planning board and recreation commission and conservation commission uh, in the past month or so. And uh, I think in the past we had the historical commission also look at the plan. And so right now there's um, six. Uh, so the idea is that the, the state has an outline. You have to follow a pretty prescriptive uh, kind of outline for the plan, but there are goals and then objectives and then action steps. And so you know, with the commission just recently finishing its preservation plan, you know, I, I was, you know, I think it could be a good idea for the commission just to look at, um, you know, the goals and see what, if there's any overlap or what could be emphasized. So, you know, the way we structured is that they're kind of broader goals and then, you know, a few objectives and then some action items. This has been further refined. I can share it with the commission, but, you know, there are six goals. The first one is connections between open space parks and recreation areas and village centers. Uh, and then, you know, the objectives are, you know, safe uh, walking routes to schools, you know, accessible routes, off-road pedestrian networks. Um, and anyway, so for the commission, it could be, well, are there, are there objectives or action items that, you know, 
could dovetail with the work we're doing or things we're thinking about. Uh, I'm not going to read every one of them. And, and like I said, we can share this. The, we're hoping to submit the plan to the state, a draft plan, uh, September 1. And so we'll probably bring this back again. Uh, goal two is protect and increase biodiversity, watershed lands, and critical natural resources. Uh, I will say that the plan, you know, part of the plan is that every time we apply for a grant um, through certain programs, we have to have certain things mentioned in the plan. It gets us points. So it is a, you know, we do use the plan when we apply for a land grant or a park grant or a land water conservation fund. Um, uh, goal three is incorporate climate resiliency, sustainability, public awareness, equity, and inclusion in all recreation and open space programs. Goal four and five are kind of parallel goals. Uh, one is maintain and enhance um, and expand parks and recreation areas. Goal five is reads the same way, maintain, enhance, and expand conservation areas. And goal six is specific, uh, which may be dropped. It's to main, um, to uh, <laughs> to manage dogs and off-leash dogs specifically. I guess that's something that's been um, an issue on both recreation and conservation lands. But you know, for the commission, if we're talking about you know like inventorying certain areas or making connections or walking trails, you know, would we want to say as some of the action items under strategic connections, you know, not only link open spaces but you know connect, um, you know, historic sites or other things. And so, to me, that's where that's how we kind of integrate uh, some of the historic preservation priorities in the open space plan. Um, and so, you know, I don't, like I said, if, if people have ideas tonight, we can share them. This is really just kind of an intro and I can share those goals. I think, like I said, we've been staffed and working on it. So I think we already have another iteration of that. Uh, we can send out and just think about how we might want to integrate some of these things from the current preservation plan. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing that. Um thinking about sort of how our preservation plan can tie into those. Yeah, especially yeah. if, we, you know, if we can apply, if we can link it to some grant funding or, you know, have like a combined project. Right. Yeah. Um, we need more visibility for our historic districts. Mm -hmm. That's that's the thing that jumps out to me is the most obvious. Thing that jumps out to me is walking to school and the fact that we were looking recently I can't remember what it was at the East Street School and the new plans for Fort River Elementary School um, and that's some of the proposals for housing that would be added in those areas so I think that's a an important sort of intersection of rec recreation and um, village centers to especially East, the East Village. Yeah. Other comments? Okay. Hey, Nate, just out of curiosity, is there anything for protected bike lanes in that plan? <laughs> uh, I know yeah, that's I, not our purview. <laughs> oh, if you see that, you know, let me know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting concept. You know, we've been doing kind of off-road multi-use paths and then we talk about, you know, um, in-road bike lanes and, you know, um, we've so one member of the planning board uh, has suggested having, you know, protected bike lanes and road. And I, I think it's, you know, we have a bike ped plan that PVPC did in um, 2019, but it was never, I don't think it was ever formalized or implemented in a certain way, but I think it could be, you know, some of it could be picked up here too. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Just let the town know to see that on Route 9. <laughs> um, um, okay. Any other comments on the plan? Okay. Uh, I think next on our agenda, I have in my notes, is uh, the Wildwood Cemetery. So I'm assuming is Rebecca here to speak to us? You know, I had emailed her shortly before the meeting. I thought I emailed her the other week, but I don't think I included the Zoom link. I don't know if anyone is here for the cemetery, but um you know i think we could please but i don't see her in the attendees. Yeah. we could discuss um, next steps or how we'd want to help move this forward as a 
Yeah, I mean, I can jump in and say that, I mean, I did meet with Rebecca a while ago um, and I had hoped to give her a little bit more um, help than I ended up doing at, at this point, but um, I did ask uh, an MHC, you know, with the proper, um, where if, you know, someone who's not a consultant is interested in submitting a um, uh, an inventory form, um, if they're just interested in having it inventoried, um, that's one thing, but if they're interested in national register nomination, which it seems like this would probably be, I think, you know, I've been hunting around for a good project for, um, for Amherst to have for its next, um, uh, historic register, uh, nomination, this would really be kind of, um, kind of perfect, uh, and considering it's not documented there at all. So, um, then you can let her know she can submit it to um, Ben Haley, who um, is up the state register, and he can give her feedback on it. And if she wants to come and present to us after talking with him, um, having worked on a couple of um, nominations and seen models for um, stronger ones, there is there's a lot of fleshing out and organizing there that has to happen, but that would be the first piece of just sort of getting it in the door getting comments and starting that communication back and forth. Um, but I'm certainly happy to hear from other members about uh, whether they think this is a, that getting this, moving this this particular item toward national register status is, is a high priority. I would say it is, but others can weigh in. So Robin, just to clarify, you think the inventory form should be sent to Ben? Yes. As a first step, yeah. Um, yeah. And based on the fact that I think that uh, I think that we probably agree, and I, we'll find out now that this should head towards National Register nomination. Madeline, do you want to comment on that? I think you have a lot more experience than I do in that general regard. Um, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I don't have much to say to it right now about whether it looks to be um, eligible for inclusion in the National Register. I'm, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I think if you have the ear of someone at MHC, like that would, yeah, I mean, I think obviously, that, yeah. be yeah. better. I think my my understanding my my expectation would be that its association is a garden cemetery, which is a new form of um, planning. That's Amherst's only garden cemeteries. Garden cemeteries for anybody who's not familiar with them, or or you kind of leave that kind of grid behind and you create uh, an area that's more landscaped and oriented towards um, nature. And um, I think that there's probably a strong um likelihood that it could be nominated on that basis um so but ben uh ben haley would be the one to provide feedback to to rebecca and then she could work with us as well to further refine it if we want to move in that direction i think there's so much history in that cemetery it was called amos cemetery i think for a while if i'm not mistaken um so there's town history in terms of who's buried there. There's Dickinson history because of its proximity to um, their land historically in town. And I think there's a nice contrast, compare and contrast thing going on between what Robin just said about it being a sort of picturesque cemetery, looking like a public park, and our West Cemetery, which is also a really important historic resource in town. So there's a nice sort of balancing out of those two resources being really kind of critical pieces of our history, our artifactual history. Yeah, yeah. My understanding is that um, cemeteries on their own don't uh, reach national register status, um, but aspects about them can. So that was probably where, um, I think there's some association um, with um, yeah. I don't know if it's Olmstead's son or, you know, some communication there. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, I think it's a great, I'm really uh, pleased with her uh, initiative and it's a great thing to move forward. I know um, from my conversation with her, which was quite a while ago now, um, 
they have done a tremendous amount to um, map the, the plot sites there, but they have a lot of identification to do. So if anybody was up for a good volunteer project um, to assist with that, that would be a great, a great opportunity. <laughs> okay, any other comments on that? Okay. I think the plan moving forward make makes sense, and I'd I'd like to see um, it back here at some point. Yeah. Um. So next agenda item, Nate. The um yeah, the next item, it was that anything to be determined, and then it's just really oh right. <laughs> You know if there's any announcements but the rest of them are carryovers from the previous agenda so inventory form updates for demolition projects right no i think um you know just since i were talking about that yeah today we could i think you know robin had you've taken pictures of some of the buildings and if we need to work on them you know we'd uh we can catalog them and then it'd be great to get them in macros or on the maps. And then we have, you know, some files in town hall um, permitting other, you know, software. So it'd be nice to have things on a few different places, but ideally get them um, into the macros yeah. maps, whether it's a continuation sheet or something, but. Yeah. Uh, um, Hattie, do you have a particular property that you're interested in working on? I've been meaning to do the um, one on Southeast street. Um, or would you be willing to take on the house in, um, on McClellan? And you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to do whatever makes sense. Um, okay. I can do my class. I just wouldn't, I, I couldn't re remember off the top of my head if there was another property or a particularly. Yeah, we had, um, oh. you know, um, Main Street, there was. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Forty-seven fifty-five, or well, yeah. Then uh, Southeast Street, and then South Pleasant, um, and McClellan. Yeah, so there's not too many, but yeah. Um, well, I will make a commitment to having a an inventory form ready for Southeast Street by our next meeting. I'll make a very specific goal for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if anybody else is interested in working on one of these, I'd be happy to tutor them a little bit through. So feel free to reach out to me. Do you want, is that something that you feel like you can take on in the next month, Henny? Or I don't, I don't mean to volunteer you. I just know that you've just been so helpful in looking at all these places with me. But let me, let me just sort of think about that for, for, for right now. Okay. Um, there's some other things in the summer that are going to be. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think we have updates to one and five year goals. Um, CPA guidelines. Um, I think at the last meeting I mentioned, uh, and maybe we could have a discussion about, or Nate, if you want to weigh in on from the town's perspective. Um, I don't know if you know of any other towns and how they um if, if anyone else has guidelines for um for cpa funds the one thing that continues to occur to me is that if we were interested in putting a limit on it we could use language around the phrasing of character defining features uh which would be things like um windows doors um you know historic porches you know porch railings or things like that which would really narrow the focus of what somebody could apply for but might be really helpful for retaining particular features that um you know are subject to replacement with contemporary materials because maintaining a, a historic facade could be much more costly than than kind of standard standard um construction um do you do you have any feedback from what the town thinks Nate I mean we haven't really discussed it at CPA yeah I mean I think what we've seen is you know some pretty large requests coming in, in the last few years so you know we we're helping South Church 
it's a great project, but you know, it's a also, um, you know, almost two hundred forty thousand dollars was was dedicated there um, to JCA. But I think some of it is that we have, you know, private homeowners or other property owners who, in the last two years, have asked for you know upwards of four or five hundred thousand dollars to kind of fix their you know their property or something, and you know, it's just you know what what is you know is there a limit? Um, you know, Springfield has a pretty low limit, actually. Uh, some communities do that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of mixed. Like, is it proportional to the assessed, you know, assessment of the property or what they've contributed? I mean, South Church did a lot of work on the main building. And so, you know, what CPA contributed was still, you know, kind of, um, you know, fractional to what they spent rehabbing the building over the last, say, 10 years. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I go back and forth. Right. I mean, I think um, sometimes it's nice to think that we could help private property owners and then sometimes it hasn't worked out. I don't everything costs so much now. It's like is, you know, 250 a n good number. Um, Nate, I was at South Church for the dedication on Saturday and you your praises were sung. <laughs> uh, it was a wonderful event, the standing room only in the sanctuary and it was just such a good feeling to see CPA money used, see the church come together around fundraising, which coincided with their 200th anniversary of foundation of the South. Let me get this right. South Congregational Society being founded in 1824. So it was it was just really cool, you know, and what they've right. done and the kinds of groups of people who came together to to put that new belfry and st steeple back together again is just remarkable. It's a it's a great it's a great story. Yeah, no, I think it's a really good project. It's interesting that say like Springfield, I think limits historic preservation funding, depending on the entity, to you know like one hundred twenty five or one hundred fifty, and it's like well then you wouldn't be able to fund something like that. And it's like is that the right approach? And so it's really it's really difficult to say let's have a some kind of dollar amount without, ha you know, I, I don't know. It's just, I, you know, some I, of it could be, do we take it every year and just review what's submitted uh, and make recommendations? I don't, but. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Teddy. No, I, I, I mean, I'm, what's in the back of my mind is North Church, you know, which I'm really worried about and needs as much help as South Church has needed, but is in a different position in terms of not leadership so much, but just a an, an much younger congregation, not so um established in town and just a, in needing different kinds of things and and I, I want us to be ready to help them you know in, in whatever way we can and so the conversation further down the agenda about private public is important for us to kind of get straight I think yeah I mean I think uh, you know I think one of the standards for CPA is there has to be a public benefit right so we're not going to be funding any Buddy's interior historic kitchen, unless, you know, unless they decide to do historic tours, you know that, but that's like a whole, <laughs> I mean, you could do that, but um, I mean, I would say I have, I have, uh, I have so, I have a number of issues and they, I, I have never managed to write them all up into one, um, you know, kind of tome, but one of my frustrations is that there is other money out there. It's not easy to get, but there are, there's the Mass Cultural Council, there is um, the Emergency uh, Mass uh, Public Projects Fund, also has emergency stabilization funding, which I had hoped that the South Church would apply to. Um, I had hoped uh, that um, the Amherst Historical Society would apply for, and they were, they were eligible for funding under Mass Cultural Council for their engineering plans. Um, and that I would say is is one of my frustrations that um, you know these are really significant places, but there are so also I would love to see a, a requirement or a guideline, a guideline to give more points <laughs> to people, you know, who have applied and been rejected or have shown you know an effort to, uh, and I've been kind of seeing the same song for years, an effort to get more money to make, you know, to make some effort to attempt to get more funding from other sources so that our CPA doesn't have to be leaned on as heavily. And, you know, I don't know 
what the return on that is, but certainly I think there have been some some projects that have been really aligned with funding sources that are out there that I have made recommendations about that haven't come to pass. And um, so I think that's, you know, that's one thing that we could, you know, we could wait an application on the basis of that. I mean, for something like the North Church, they can't apply for anything else. Um, the, the because they're not unless they're in an emergency stabilization bond, I think. Um, you know, and it's this whole confusing thing. Like, if you're a church, what can you apply for? If you're a nonprofit, what can you apply for? <laughs> um, but there is that capacity, and um, I'd love to see that as part of a guideline too, um, so that uh, that we're not, you know, there's there's it just seems to me like there's this process where it's like September first hits. And sudden, suddenly you've got somebody who's in a dire situation. <laughs> and, um, and I guess the other, uh, the other possibility is to, you know, break, break projects down into smaller components and, you know, we could award smaller amounts of funding for, you know, I know sometimes there are cost savings to lump things together, but smaller amounts of funding for specific targeted areas. So, um, but uh, is there is the town expecting something for us, Nate, or? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just something to be aware of. So, you know, last CPA round, there are a few private homeowners who said, oh, I have an old house in town. I, I think I might apply for CPA money to do something. And I was like, well, I'm not sure it's eligible. Right. They're like, oh, it's a really old house on, you know, wherever. And I, I'm like, okay, you know, and that, you know, and they end up not applying, but I think I think more people are going to be doing that. So, you know, like churches are certain things that right are part of a national register district or, you know, they're all there, you know, there's a public face. Uh, you know, I think the, the public value is, is a, a little easier to determine than say, Oh, there's a, you know, a house on Henry street that's really old. I'd like to fix it. And so, you know, the CPA committee, I don't know if they've asked, but I think the commission would be the ones to weigh in and say, you know, this really isn't a priority use of CPA funds. And maybe it just happens on an annual basis. But if we had some guidelines, and maybe it's not, you know, ready for this year, but to develop some just so, you know, applicants aren't, you know, they're applying, you know, with some expectation or some help. And so it's just, to me, it's interesting that, you know, someone would call and say, I have an old house, you know, I'm doing a little bit of a renovation, but oh, maybe I can get CPA funds to shore up the foundation. And I, it, you know, and yeah, I mean, there's a house. I don't know anything about this house. It's right around the corner for me. On, um, I guess that's Triangle. Um, this guy's been working on it right. forever, <laughs> and and that porch has deteriorated now. You know, to the point beyond repair. And it was really beautiful, and that's the sort of one element I would have loved to, you know, put CPA money toward, which wouldn't have been a huge grant. Would have been really super public facing and architecturally distinct and so um you know i think maybe maybe leaning away from i mean we, we one can argue that a um when you've got deferred maintenance you know a paint job is is um uh a form of preservation but we could steer away from things like that because paint jobs are relatively straightforward whereas you know the more complicated things like you know, repointing windows or, or or masonry or whatever. I'm mixing up my language, but okay. Well, it's something to put on the list of things to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other? Yeah, I was going to say some of it's important just because I think the last two CPA cycles there's been much more requested than is available. Yeah. And so I think sometimes the CPA committee might need some help discerning and saying, well, which ones are not going to be funded, right? Or, or you know, the, the worst case is that they try to fund everything partially, but maybe the better decision is to say, well, here are some priority proposals and some just don't get funded. And, you know, I don't know what the case will be this year, but I think, you know, maybe the commission has to, you know, take a, you know, I think we try to every year anyways, review the historic ones um, proposals, but maybe we do it again this year, just knowing, you know, what, what are the priorities based on the new preservation plan or what, you know, action items we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and we can expect to see those proposals in, well, um, do we have any way of, so it's July. Do we have any way of getting um, 
public word out that potential applicants for historic preservation CPA funds um, are welcome at the August and September Historical Commission meetings so that they can get feedback about their project. I think that's also what usually happens is they throw in an application and then the next time we see the application, it's, you know, we, it, it doesn't even get a pass before us, before it's being considered for funding. We don't have any opportunity to give them feedback. So um, I'm not sure how maybe doing a, um, you know, an alert or an announcement or something like that, or if there's anything um, media wise uh, that could go out to um, encourage folks to get in touch with us so that they could get on the agenda for for August or September before applications are due. Yeah, I think maybe we could do something, you know, in on the website or something. You know, last year we did come up with like a generic CPA um, email. It's like to say town of Amherst CPA or I don't know whatever it is, but it goes to a number of staff and I'm one of them. So if someone does inquire, I get a, I, I'll get a copy of that, but it doesn't, you know, it's, it doesn't necessarily, it isn't a, you know, a public um, kind of like message saying, you know, here, here, you know, here's, you can come to the commission beforehand. So maybe we could. So, I mean, like I get our meetings on a text alert, you know, that, right, right. That's kind of an interesting, just to get, if you get it in enough people's hands, maybe it, the word spreads a little bit more. Yeah, and no, I think that's a good idea just because, right, otherwise they've already submitted a proposal and then the commission is, you know, reviewing at the same time as a CPA committee. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that something that could go into uh, the indie or? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good place. I was, you know, just, when you said text alert, there's ways we could do that online with a, you know, on the web page or uh, okay. using some broadcasting methods through the multimedia. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments on that? Okay. Uh, so are we up to public comment, Nate? We are. Okay. I think that I have forgotten in the past the proper instruction for public comment. What do we have a three minute limit and you identify yourself by your name and where you live? Yeah, I mean. A three minute guideline. Three minutes. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily know why we have to know where they live, but if you want to ask, sure. I think it's, you know, open to the public for anyone, but. Oh, okay. I mean, is residency status relevant or? I think some boards it is if you're commenting on a project, you know, so if you have like, you know, you could have legal standing if it's a okay. you know project at a certain address, but otherwise to me, it's just general public comment. Okay. Not really, there's no residency requirement. Okay. Um, well, I do see hands in the audience. Um, so um, the first, uh, the top of my list, I see Jeff Lee, who I'd like to recognize um, can you bring Jeff Lee into the meeting? Yeah, I think and, Jeff, if you unmute yourself, I think you can speak. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, this is Jeff Lee. I live in South Amherst. And I have some questions and a couple concerns about the Jones Library building project and um, the requirements to perform a historic review uh, of the adverse effects brought about by the project. Um, I understand that a letter has surfaced written by the state historic preservation officer identifying a number of adverse effects. Uh, this was triggered by the um, project notification form that was submitted last October, I believe. The letter was written in November and it explains that a section 106 review is required because um, not only is state grant money involved, but also federal uh, NEH and HUD grant money is involved. Um, but the, I find there's a lot of confusion about what the section 106 process is supposed to be. Um, apparently since that letter was written, um, NEH has delegated the review re responsibility to HUD and HUD has delegated it to the town of Amherst. Um, I don't know if you're aware of that process, but um, at any rate, we uh, it's supposed to be a public process with a 
public, basically a negotiation between the public who may have an interest in the historic value of the Jones Library and the proponents of the project who may just want to collect the money. Um, so I'm wondering if you can shed any light on what the historic review requirements are. Um, and I also have a concern that this letter uh, was copied to, according to the letter writer, it was carbon copied to the Amherst Historical Commission and the library director, Sharon Sherry. And it seems to have stopped. Uh, there's no widespread awareness of that this letter was ever sent. And the fact that there have been adverse effects identified seems to be an important thing that you guys should be aware of. So um, I just wanted to express that concern and raise that question. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Nate, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, the commission held, uh, I think, three hearings uh, to review the library earlier this year, and that letter was a part of it. And so, uh, you know, what we, you know, the idea that is that there are now proposed changes to the library, and would come back to the commission for new hearings. And so, you know, um, that's what we're. The last item tonight would be to discuss trying to get a date in late July or early August when the commission could hold a hearing to review the revised library plans. And so previously when the commission did, you know, the presentation included, uh, you know, some changes to the historic structure, but a lot of effort was made to retain the interior um, trim and other things. And so the commission found that, you know, there was a lot, you know, there wasn't an adverse impact. Um, you know, I think Mass Historic actually said that they had concerns about removing a stairwell and, um, you know, a few other things that was addressed during the hearing process. But all of that will be, you know, discussed again at, you know, an upcoming hearing. Um, and there are how many there are several different processes in terms of the review, right? There's Section 106. There's a review related to state tax credits. Um, the preservation and restriction. And then there's a the preservation restriction. I think that might be helpful to explain to audience members what each, if if we can't, I can't do it, but <laughs> if we can, you know, divide out uh, those three aspects. Yeah, I mean, I think some of it would be just, I would say stay tuned because we are trying to schedule a public hearing to review it all over again. And so, um, you know, it's not an agenda item tonight, so I don't really want to start discussing the project necessarily just because, you know, we're trying to have a meeting or two dedicated to just that. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Let's see. Uh, next in the audience, I have a Sarah. Sarah, if you could identify yourself and make your comments. Thank you very much, um, Chair Fordham. Um, I'm Sarah McKee. I was the immediate past president of the Jones Library Trustees, though immediate in this context does mean more than a decade. And I, I'm glad to hear what you say about um, the slate roof, the quote value engineering unquote proposal is to repair, or replace the original slate roof with asphalt shingles, I believe. Um, that slate roof was repaired in 2010 with an emergency CPA grant of $140,000. And it was one of the two grants that formed the basis of the historic preservation restriction agreement that I think that the trustees signed in 2017. So I hope that you will make the public hearing on this matter really public. I mean, not just open to the public, but well publicized to the public, since there are many people who are concerned about the site roof and many people who are concerned about the value engineering proposal to discard all that 
irreplaceable hand-carved millwork in, in the interior of the building. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Um, next member of the audience reads as League of Women Voters. If you could identify yourself and make your comment. Hi, this is Rebecca Fricka. I, I don't know how Zoom logged in with the League, but <laughs> I think I, I wrote down the wrong time for the meeting. So you probably did talk about Wildwood and for me. We did, okay. Rebecca. Thank you for joining us. All right. I think I logged in right right when you moved on to the next thing. So um if if I if you want, tell me, tell me what I need to do. <laughs> okay. Um well Nate is gonna uh direct you to Ben Haley, who's the director, uh the state registered uh keeper at uh MHC. And okay. um I think we've uh, sort of agreed as a commission that um that Wildwood Cemetery would make a good um, a good candidate for nomination to the National Register. So that would be the logical first step is that you would start to have a, a conversation with him about the inventory form that you've prepared and the steps that you uh, could take and that we could assist you with in moving that um, inventory form to, um, to National Register um, okay. nomination status, which um, I, I'm guessing takes a good amount of time, but um, that should begin the conversation. Okay. So, uh, but we don't start with the state at least. Or that is the, that's the state that's been oh, held that at, mass, okay. yeah, at mass, mass historic. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. So okay. I and thank be... you so much. We, we really appreciate your hard work on this and it's a really great, um, okay. piece thus far. <laughs> All right. And I'm so sorry. I don't know how I got the time wrong. Um, and okay. I do want to give you a heads up. I am trying to collect quotes right now for uh, brick and mortar work. Um, you'll remember that my last CPA application had both the roof and the brick and mortar and I, you asked me to split it and I did. So I'm trying to get some quotes for the brick work now. It's proving to be rather difficult to get quotes. Okay. Um, but hopefully I will get that application done so that you can see that in September. Great. We look forward to it. All right. So Nate, I'll be in touch with you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay, uh, Hilda Greenbaum, please. Uh, yeah, Hilda Greenbaum, North Amherst, and I just want to reiterate the concern Hetty mentioned about the North Amherst Church. I cry every time I drive by it. They have money now. Is anybody keeping on top of them, helping them get the work done so we don't have a case of demolition by neglect? It just, we've had a lot of rain and a lot of wind, and it just seems to be deteriorating by the day. So I'm just asking if there's somebody in town that can help them get the work done or, you know, help them organize whatever they have to organize to find somebody to do the work. It, it's heartbreaking to me to see what has happened in the 30 years since the Congregational Church sold the building, that it's worse by the day. Thanks, Hilda. Nate, do you have a follow-up from the town or? Yeah, they um, they have been working with, um, oh, I um, gosh, I, his name just escaped me, Matt um, uh, Corcoran and um, someone else and they had received quotes. And so right now the work, the CPA funded work is really for the roof, but other parts of the exterior are not, um, you know, the, it would be their, uh, their own fundraising or their project. And so, yeah, they're, um, we're working to get a contract in place, but, you know, they, they emailed a few weeks ago and said they're, they're really anxious to get started. And so they're, they're aware of it. Uh, and they'd like to get the work done this year. So, but I think there's more that could be done on the building. It's just not, you know, it's not what the CPA product is being funded. Robin, you're muted. Yeah, so, but the, but the, um, do it, is there an anticipated start date for the work that's been approved through CPA? 
No, no, I, I had reached out and said I'd try to get a, an agreement, but we have said before that they could apply for permits. I don't, I don't think they've come in yet, um, but they could, you know, they could be getting ready. I I, I can double check that. Okay. Okay. Um, and I don't see any new hands up. Um, looks like Rebecca still has her hand up, but I'm assuming that's uh, just that, and now it's down. <laughs> okay. So uh, any other public comment? Um, so you can raise your hand. Otherwise, we will move on to uh, unanticipated items. Seeing no hands in the audience, uh, any unanticipated items uh, for the commission? Hey, do we want to talk about membership at all? Yeah, we could. I, I think in light of that, we could also talk about, you know, trying to get a meeting in late July for the Jones Library. Okay. Um, just, I think it'd be good to try to get a date now with everyone here. The, um, you know, two members, Antonia and Michaela, your terms have ended, but you can be reappointed and serve until you either are reappointed or replaced, uh, which is helpful because we need to have a quorum for the Jones Library and one member needs to recuse themselves. Um, and we need two weeks notice. So, you know, I think if, you know, if we're looking at trying to get something, you know, like July 25th, Thursday or the following week, July 29th, um, into early August, if people are around, that'd be a good week to have the hearing uh, and that allow us to advertise it. Uh, in terms of membership, you can let me know offline. I spoke with Michaela a bit, Antonia, what you'd like to do. We still have, we still have a vacancy. I know someone submitted a form uh, months ago and I thought, you know, would be appointed by now, but I will do a follow-up as well. I know Robin, you did a few weeks ago, uh, which would be nice to have another member. Okay. So is but, our, um, sorry, is our, the, the July 18th meeting, is that not uh, scheduled anymore? No, 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 we couldn't get a quorum. And so, you know, oh. it was difficult to be, and then with the advertising requirement that that won't happen. So that's why I'm, I'm thinking a week or so later, just to, you know, given the lead time to schedule um, a hearing and do a legal notice, you know, it could be you know, the week of the 29th or August 5th, but somewhere, you know, in those two weeks that we could meet and we could let the library know. Okay. So, and this will be, can we, can you just give me a, a quick overview of what we will be considering in this meeting for the Jones Library? Yeah. So, you know, previously we had, uh, it was a dual hearing for demolition review or, you know, preservation. And it's going to be that again, because um, changing the roof, uh, material possibly and some other things triggers that review again and then it's for the preservation restriction and it could also then fold in 106 so it could be that you know at least for the initial hearing it'll be um, preservation restriction and demolition review and then like we did last time we continued the hearing for a night or actually i think it was like three we had three hearings that went through all sections um so my right but we won't it's not the tax credit review so we're not but we are reviewing the interior for the preservation restriction is the that restriction right restriction doesn't really go in the interior that would be for 106 and so to me that would be a second, a second hearing um so i think so, initially it would be just you know the restriction and the demolition because if depending on what the commission does who knows where the project will go after that and so we could schedule you know um, a second so year. we'll only consider the exterior in those and the, and the grounds and um yeah. Right. yeah okay that's good to know and then if if things move forward we would move on to the section 106 review and that will include interior yes if it, if it's okay. Yeah, and we could schedule it for to be all at once, and then if it doesn't get reviewed, it doesn't. But um, you know, I think last time it took three meetings. You know, they're and they're only for the library, so it was you know, yeah, you know, probably two or three hours for um, kind of each section. Right. I anticipate that just those the preservation restriction and demo review would be enough for one meeting. Yeah, I mean, I, I envision like a whole other presentation outlining any changes from previous and discussion. So it's it'll be a pretty big review. Mm -hmm. Nate, am I right in thinking that as part of the 
recent value engineering proposals um, that the the landscaping is has mostly been eliminated. I mean, I think so. I don't. Like I said, I don't want to comment on it until they present it to us. But so any of those things, right, are part of the preservation restriction review. It's about you know, like what exactly we'll be looking at. Yeah. Um, yeah. The idea would be that we'd have a, you know, information to share before the hearing, so the commission will have been had some time to look at it. So um, I have to recuse myself. I'm assuming that Madeline then, because she's the vice chair, um, her schedule comes first. So maybe we want to start with when you're available, Madeline. Yeah, that sounds good. I am. Um, I just I'm gone for. So from August 7th on, I for about two weeks, I'm away. So sounds like we can schedule it before that though um you're thinking july the week of july 22nd or july 29th nate um so i'll come back to you all with to to sort of um with my availability for those two weeks and then okay. maybe i'll put a doodle well, together Send those to me. I'll, I'll put the poll out. I can do that. If you want to send me your dates, I'll start with that and send it out to everybody. Okay. And Thank then, yeah. Um, yeah. And if everybody could just really um, respond as soon as possible so that we can get a date nailed down. Mm -hmm. um, that would be great. Um, and we also need to schedule uh, our next regular meeting for August. Uh, and I am gone. I'm I'm available. If we're doing Mondays, I'm available the fifth, and then not again until the twenty sixth. Um, so I'm hoping that we could do the fifth. What what do, what are people's schedules looking like? Um, I could do the fifth. Okay, okay. Pat's a yes. Hetty's a yes. Antonio's a yes. Michaela's a yes. All right. Maybe Madeline's a yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, have, I have this to check, but I think so. Okay. All right. So that's like August 5th will be our next regular meeting. Uh, Madeline will get me her availability. I'll put a frame of date poll together and send it out to everybody and everybody will respond right away. And we'll set the date for the first um, Jones review meeting, which uh, Madeline will chair. Awesome. Right. Okay. Great. Uh, I think that's it. Is that it, Nate? Yeah. Well done, Robin. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything to add. Um, okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. I'm adjourning the meeting as of 7.41 p.m. tonight. Take care. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you.